is. Martijn Bloem, a social entrepreneur and impact investor. That sounds really interesting at Hevos Impact Investments. Um, your Twitter bio, by the way, reads that you love the cult of football. So you might not share anything about it, but it's good for the audience to know. Uh, Martijn, the stage is all yours. Okay, thank you. Um, ah, this is on, thank you. So welcome everybody. For me, it's a bit of a surprise as well. I was supposed to be one hour earlier on another stage. Um, but I'm here now. Uh, I'm happy you're all here. Maybe some other people will join. I hope you're interested in the topic of investment because that is what I'm going to be talking about. Not about energy. I love energy. I'm going to do a big stage on a European conference in two weeks about uh, clean energy. So if you want to touch that topic, please do because I probably can learn from you um, uh, on that. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about impact investment. The way I prepared this, uh, 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 this session is that I'll take you through um, uh, the impact investment fund I've set up and the way we look at startups and the way we rise startups. But the, so this is really the story of Hevos Impact Investments as it's called. Hevos is one of the big four Dutch NGOs. It's been active in the field for almost half a century in the uh, field of in international development. And um, they were one of the first already to support uh, uh, entrepreneurs with finance as one of the first microfinance organizations in the past. Actually, their microfinance endeavors of the past helped them uh, 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 create for them for the for the um, for the international development part of the thing one of the one of the most sustainable uh, new sources of income. And more recently, they've said we want to support these SMEs, these entrepreneurs that actually have the passion to change the world, that actually are active in the field, uh, know what's going on locally, and instead of you know subsidizing them and giving them money. We would love to have them uh, uh, supported in the way of impact investment. So maybe we can get the money back in the future. We can make some profit on it. And we kind of have a win-win situation in which you can keep on supporting uh, uh, these companies. So the fund I'll be talking about is the first fund we set up as Hivos. Uh, it's called um, Hivos Midis Creatives. Why they asked me is that I'm... Um, what they call a business angel. I don't like to call myself an angel, but that's how they call it. I'm a business angel, uh, an informal investor, they say as well. After I sold, uh, I was able to exit my company. Uh, I, I've made a couple of investments as a, as a business angel, um, not just in the Netherlands, also in water filters, for example, in Indonesia. So I really got involved in this whole impact, impact investment. Um, uh and, and 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 that was the reason why Earthcon in, uh, invited me to to speak on uh, to speak on this topic. Um, uh, this, I think, for you is the boring slide, but kind of gives the numbers of the fund we're setting up. It's a relatively small fund, although it's still hard kind of to raise uh, seven and a half million. But for fund and from fund perspectives, it's really small. We created it s this small to actually, as as he was, be able to to um, to, to to make to make this first step and we wanted to set something up in which we couldn't just invest alone but always to co-invest with other parties that are active in the region we are uh, we are targeting i think it's mentioned here yes we are targeting the mena region so we're especially active in tunis i was uh, tuesday morning uh, there was a group of um, uh, tunisian startups that actually uh, 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 were in the netherlands to 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 attend startup fest uh, we had a breakfast with them. So very, very, very interesting startups. Um, Egypt, uh, Jordan, and my colleagues are, as we speak, in uh, Beirut, Lebanon, for the for the design week. Um, the sector that we're targeting is the creative sector. Um, this is a b behind me. You see a couple of industries that we would uh, uh, consider the uh, creative sector. Um, this is a sector. Um, as you might not expect, I, I didn't know before I started this fund. It's quite spread over the region, and it's actually a sector. In uh, if you if you if you fund art and culture, uh, you kind of uh, you're kind of able to fund more more open and more creative society. So you're really providing an alternative for 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 new e new economy and uh, um, that kind of. Um, um so the impact we would be targeting is, first of all, the financing gap of the missing middle. It's a bit of a technical term, but what you see in uh, um, in international development, in 
in developing countries is that um, there's a lot of finance for early stage companies. There's a lot of seed initiative kind of things. There's a lot of uh, contests going on in which they can get first startup money. There's plenty of money left for companies that have al already made it, that are past the growth stage, that are like very traditional large scale uh, companies. There's uh, amazingly a lot of investment in that type of companies, also from regions like uh, uh, China, but don't 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 underestimate what what ki ki kind of money comes from this kind of companies from from Europe and the states as well. Uh, but there's this missing middle gap, this SME uh, gap. Companies that can kind of come out of this accelerator incubator kind of initiatives uh, uh, and can't make it to that to that next step, can't make it to that to that to that to the bigger gap. And we are targeting exactly that that group of uh, investors. The impact we're targeting youth employment. The youth employment numbers in this area are enormous uh, which of course has a lot of effect on what's going on in the region and also it's targeting all the things we see uh, uh, today uh, both uh, uh, attraction to local alternatives uh, uh, which is pu putting it mildly but the, 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 the whole uh, um, uh, uh, ISIS and, 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 and extremism that's going on in the region um, but also of course uh, what we've seen in migration uh, problems people like talented people uh, uh, coming over here to, to build a new to build a new future. Um, as a sidestep to impact investment, you've got a lot of initiatives going on these days for tech uh, tech startups for people that have talent in uh, in Europe and actually come here uh, in the in the stream of refugees to get them uh, to become entrepreneurs. Uh, what we are doing with our fund is uh, see if we can uh, create uh, alternatives locally in the in the countries where they uh, where they are from. Um, so the youth employment numbers are even worse if you look at women. Um, a lot of the startups I meet, though, are run by women for the same for the same for the same kind of topic. And by promoting and funding them, we expect to actually increase the the the, the unemployment of the, the, the not increase the unemployment to increase the employment of uh, of, uh, of females. I want to create a more open society. Um, with open society, we look at things like press freedom. We look at like freedom of expression, stuff like that. And uh, the situation in this part of the world, uh, not surprisingly, isn't uh, uh, that good. It's kind of confusing sometimes to be talking to you because you have the, the, the ability to look at one stage. But I look over you and I see people jumping a uh, dance floor over there. It's like, whoa, what are they doing, kind of? Um, sorry about that. So I've been a bit distracted because of, uh, because of that. Um, this is the team we're working with. Um, so Keith, my colleague, we, we co-founded something called the Investors Club in the Netherlands, which is a network of business angels. So if you are a social or a tech startup or uh, you're joining the event and you want to learn more about impact investment or about business angel investment, then, I've been ab then I'm able to tell here on stage, please reach out to the Investors Club, the Investors Club, and we can probably help you, uh, help you out, which doesn't always mean that we can help you finance, but we can at least tell you a lot more about financing and, and connect you to investors if, you're, if your case is investable. Uh, um, together with Keith, I'm involved in the fund. Uh, Jaap is, um, it's actually a funny story. Uh, Jaap is the only entrepreneur I ever invested in that went hardcore bankrupt. Uh, um, but we stayed friends uh, along the way anyway, and he got a new job at Hivos, and he's now running uh, uh, Hivos Impact Investments. We got a good team uh, for our investment committee. Uh, people from the Netherlands might know Simone Brummelhuis, who set up uh, uh, the Next Woman, uh, which is a network of female entrepreneurs. Um, she used to be in an investment committee of another big uh, Dutch NGO, which is kind of useful because they stopped her endeavor, so she can hopefully uh, 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 lead us around the, uh, the, the, the traps. Um, Lars is a very interesting guy. He's from uh, he's Norwegian from birth. He lives in Sweden now, but moving back to Norway. But he's all about open society. So if we look at open society uh, uh, and civil society, we really need his uh, expertise in the in the team to uh, to look at the partnership. He's currently working uh, to get uh, 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 to make of the city of Trondheim one big lab of social innovation. Um, and it's not like they kind of would build one building in the so building in in front time and said this is our lab but it's really like all the inhabitants of front time will get a letter congratulations you now live in a lab 
which is a really exciting pro pro project uh, he's working on. I hope to work with them on, uh, him on that a bit as well. Um, Tarek is our Egyptian, uh, our Egyptian guy. I, I never met a more talented uh, uh, investor while being so down to earth, cool guy. Uh, really good to, to learn. Uh, Elias is our uh, uh, Beirut guy, and if you ever met Lebanese people, uh, 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 and you put them uh, very generally speaking, as opposed to Egyptian people, is Egyptian are the, the down to earth guys, and the Lebanese people are the uh, Americans of the Middle East, I would almost say, not trying to insult you guys. <laughs> um, but they are really shouting it out, right? They, 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 they know where they are, but it's a very talented, uh, talented person as well. Edwin is our CEO of HIVOS, uh, of the foundation, so to kind of connect them into the uh, organization. And he's really supportive of what we're doing uh, within, uh, within HIVOS. Um, we're leveraging on a program, it's a program that's already going on for two or three years. So we're really already sucked into the ecosystem in this, uh, this place. We kind of know all the co-working spaces, the incub incubators, and we get a lot of deal flow from, uh, from that area. So um, uh, you see that the bigger impact investor uh, uh, clubs all over the world, they would kind of collaborate at least with these type of uh, uh, organizations to kind of uh, be involved in an early stage. Um, so there's, so, so if you're a very early stage company, there's probably little investment unless you can get people that like you and know you or love you uh, uh, to put some money in your on your bank a bank account. But if you can make if you can put that first money to work and get to the next step, that's when uh, that's when the investors get interested. And what you see happening more and more, and what you also we also try to do by working collaborating with the Mid East Creators Program, is. Uh, um is to get involved with these uh, startups in a very early stage. So you get to know uh, their way of working, you get to know uh, why they succeed, uh, you get to know why they fail, um, but you exactly know uh, what the entrepreneur, how he is, what he can do, how he, he, he battles challenges and how he uh, uh, kind of works on failures and how he learns and how he experiments. And then even um, if, if you are involved that close with an entrepreneur or with an entrepreneurial team, then sometimes it's easier to invest even without uh, having the 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 the, the valuation uh, the valuation right because you know the team. Um. Um, so these are our investment criteria. I, I, I don't uh, uh, know if they would work with uh, every organization, um, um, but I th I think if 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 you would look at uh, uh, investors um, apart from informals that often don't have a clue as well, to be quite honest, you will find something like this are the investors criteria. If you don't fit investment criteria of an in investment fund, if you're looking for investment, don't even bother calling them. Because that's, the, that's, that's, that's just going to lead to, 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 to nothing anyway. Um, uh, we want to have a strong management team. I think that's one of the reasons we, uh, I just felt we work together with the Midis uh, creators. We want companies to have traction, which sounds a bit weird, but we actually mean the second thing, like, like we need companies that are post post revenue. We want to see that you actually have a business model and that you at least have tried this business model. Uh, um, some people say, so you wouldn't have invested in Twitter. And then we say, yeah, that's right, because we are investing in the Middle East. So it doesn't really make sense to uh, uh, invest free revenue in this entire part of the world. Um, and we want first people to have thought about the clear exit strategy already. Ex especially because exits in this part of the world are rare, uh, uh, are, are uh, really rare. Um, we want people to have thought about it so we can discuss it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the final exit strategy. We want people to have an ID. And we want people to, on that ID, we can build towards something that would work better or we can find organizations that would fit that strategy. But we're really looking to uh, to that. And that's a, that's a difficult one because that's something that you aren't, uh, usually uh, thinking of too much when you just are starting your, uh, your company. Um, we invest between 50,000 and 1 million. We have two investments done now by our cornerstone investment. We had some money to, to kind of kick off with. Um, there's one company that's in, uh, in media that actually covers uh, uh, conflicts like uh, Syria, but now also Libya and also the refugee uh, uh, crisis. They were originally based out of uh, out of Beirut, uh, but for security reasons they had to move. They're now uh, based out of uh, out of New York. Their CEO is an American uh, American citizen, uh, but they're they're doing great job. They're selling all their articles. They help create 
to uh, platforms like New York Times and, and, and Reuters. And they also have a business to business component in which companies kind of can, can put their name towards the, 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 the topics they want to have, uh, have covered. This was a series, series A round already, so we put uh, about 300,000 euros into that, uh, to that uh, uh, conglomerate of investors. Um, th this investment was led by uh, Omidyar, Omidyar Foundation of Pierre Omidyar of eBay. Um, we have a f very small uh, investment of about $70,000, so which is uh, just above the 50,000 euros. We've done that in a way of a convertible debt in a very early stage. But with the program of Evos, we were able to leverage uh, uh, the investment by giving them assignments uh, to that helped uh, really helped uh, us uh, get our impact uh, goals as a as a as an organization, and that really helped them fl fly and grow within uh, within the region. This company is called Zumal, and Zumal is uh, one of the uh, uh, main crowdfunding platforms for arts and culture in the region. So if you're an investment fund like us, and we support creative entrepreneurs, then really supporting art and culture is a kind of off if you're looking at exit strategies and stuff like that. But by investing in a platform that supports uh, that, that actually arranges uh, 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 money, that actually uh, creates money from, from the own community to support arts and culture, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a very, uh, very great uh, thing. Um, I think the best example of what they managed to do was uh, when in Libya, uh, the library was uh, was burned down. Uh, a group of citizens uh, created a, a crowdfunding initiative on um, uh, on Zumal and were able to raise uh, seventy thousand euros uh, within three days to rebuild uh, the library in uh, in Tripoli. Um, so that's uh, that's really cool stuff to be uh, to be involved in. I think. Um, I already came through this. Uh, uh, this coming is yeah. This is also already the end of uh, end of what I got. Um, we're here with a small group, anyway. Uh, I mean, you all came. I, I told my story from the Hevos Impact Investment perspectives. I have a broader experience from being a business angel myself. Uh, I do a lot of uh, trainings for uh, how to approach business angels and stuff. Maybe maybe there are some questions from you, or you're trying to raise yourself right now, and you're troubled, or something I can help with. And please, uh, I'm here. Anyone looking into financial advice, startup advice, <laughs> things you have to think of? The five biggest. Yes, there's the person. Thank you. Um, is it working? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was wondering, do you also have uh, like an equivalent in uh, in this region in Holland or Europe uh, to the creators fund yeah uh, like uh, he was but then for the, the Holland creators Ho yeah. fund <laughs> uh, I, I I I think I think so uh, there's a li there's a lot of things that are kind of a uh, kind of aligned um, um, so, s so for example Sanoma Ventures which is from uh, they I, d I don't know I think kind of pulled the plug out of that uh, that initiative but it was it was targeting uh, creative tech solutions that kind of you know aligned with their uh, uh, publisher efforts um, I think uh, uh, the big media companies still have uh, RTL4 uh, stuff like that yeah uh, but really on creators I wouldn't wouldn't know by head and and more as in uh, social enterprises in general apart from creative yeah 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 you got uh, Sherpa uh, you could look up Sherpa. They are really on uh, on social uh, social enterprise, and, uh, and there's a couple of uh, there's a, there's quite a couple of those. There's quite a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And how do you get startups? Pimimic. Oh, keep a Pim Pim is a network of uh, uh, Pim It's put your money where your mouth is. Company. <laughs> they have a big network of uh, impact investors, as they say. Yeah. And I was wondering, because when you start a company, you basically, you just have a great idea and you want to make really cool stuff, something like that. Yeah, so cool. thinking exit strategies and money, how do you get these people from not only thinking about their great idea, but really also the money side? How, how do you do that? We don't. 
Um, yeah, that's the easy answer. Okay. So if you if you're just at the ID stage, there's other there's there's really other organizations that can help you out, kind of to turn to turn ID to money. When I started off as an investor, I I, I thought my my own company in the Netherlands is called Droomzaken, which means dream business, and we thought exactly that. There's so many people that have big dreams and they should be uh, made uh, we should make it available to kind of have these dreamers make a business and we're going to help because we have the business experience yay Th that failed too often so we don't do that anymore um so if you're a dreamer that's fine i love dreamers really do i don't fund dreamers that's something else uh, uh so if you're a dreamer find the organization that can help you and if you are ready to make money with it if you can ready to make business out of it then come to the investors and and when is that? When do you know that that's the time? When you have when you have traction, when you have first revenue, when you have first customers lined up, when you have that's that's. I time. saw hands. Probably w people were wondering sort of the same thing. But I'll give you the mic. I've I've kind of it's not an investment question, but it's it's more a business question. Please. Um, uh, uh, some people, uh, I'm I'm working on a on a project for uh, for a health institution, and um, uh, we're creating software um, uh, for for this health in, uh, uh, institution. But uh, there's no real owner of the software here, and that's that's really weird because um, so th there's a company in Bangladesh that they're they're building the software. There's two entrepreneurs. Um, uh, that just you know uh, 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 do the business with the with the health inst health institution, but um, yeah, last meeting we we were talking about yeah, who who's owning this software, and there was no idea. And I was like, uh, you know, this the uh, they're gonna pay me for uh, uh, the health uh, uh, institution is gonna pay me. But the the two entrepreneurs asked me um, if I would like to own the software with them, but I'm not sure if I'm. <laughs> going to do that but how but would you solve such a thing and make it business you know it, you yeah. could make a startup of uh, 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 you know ownership of the software and and trying to uh, eventually set it somewhere else well, eventually if you would look at it legally of course there's an owner of the software yeah, yeah. who in this case would be would that be I don't know it depends on the contracts that's the thing with software. It's not something you say, I'll take it home back night, I'll put it in my closet and bring it again back one day, happy weekend. Again, it, that doesn't work. So, so the software thing is something you need to, usually when you start uh, doing uh, this kind of uh, uh, assignments, you kind of sign off on, on also who has the ownership of the of the, of the company. I, I yeah, yeah, but I, I work for the, for the institution. So I'm the creative person who, uh, 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 you know, things how, how 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 does the software uh, have to work yeah so well and that's my job for the health institution so they own so it's I, I what understand. i do so and th they pay that's me that's not your job but usually that's something if in this type of situations you yeah. would make a contract with um uh, with uh, two entrepreneurs with uh, with the institution and you say either we work for you but we keep the rights for the software or you say we work for you uh, but the rights for the software are for the institution, but then you pay us a bit more. That's usually yeah. the kind of kind of kind of what 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 happens. Um, it depends on your own uh, because the second question I can't answer, of course. So if the entrepreneurs ask you to become, I think in general, if there's no agreements on software, the maker is the owner of the software. Uh, yeah, that's my point. So that's so the they guys in Bangladesh. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> yeah. Be the owner, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and and then there, the, 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 these two are fucked then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just helping them with their pitch. So you know that I don't. I've I've one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have one uh, had a had a rather peculiar uh, situation with an organization that was crowdfunding as well, um, and it was with a guy called Pim Batiste. And Pim Batiste is, if you would look back in, uh, in his, he's one of the first that actually had a crowdfunding platform. And that was called Celeband. And Celeband, you could, as a band, you could upload your music, f uh, put up a couple of photos. I don't think too many videos at the time. And then uh, people could start crowdfunding your, your band. And if you kind of came to a certain level, then you went into the studio and professional uh, album uh, made. That was kind of the, uh, the idea. Um, and it worked, but it didn't work fast enough and didn't grow quick enough, so it kind of, you know, flatlined. And um, 
in a second company, I was the investor, and it was called Africa Unsigned, and it was basically the same as Celeband, but then for unsigned African artists and African talent. Um, um, and the thing was, because we started it off, he said, like, I'm going to arrange with uh, Celeband that we can use the software, kind of, because I'm not going to make the software all over again. I just spent lots of money, lots of time, and uh, lots of frustration building it. We got it in the closet, and they uh, they owe me some, right? So, uh, we got we got the software, but Celeband and Africa and Signed in the first two months were existing, coexisting. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys who was in our group of investors, very smart guy, he said, he said, Pim, when you're negotiating about the software, could you please, please, please put in the contract that everything, including the source code, is ours if Celeband goes bankrupt? And we kind of wrote that into the contract, and they didn't notice or didn't mind or didn't. I, I don't know. And what happened two months later? Celeband went bloody bankrupt. And it's really a story like you would see in a series. He says, Pim Batist on his bike with a CD in his back pocket. He was like going to that company and running in and saying to one of his like loyalist, longest working people that was totally frustrated about the situation. Said, we have a contract. We can have the source code. Can you upload it for us, please, now before the other guys come in? And this guy uploaded it quickly, quickly. He put it in his back pocket. And we had the software kind of. Uh, and if they would have kind of complained about it, it was in the contracts. Well, if they would have seen him coming in, s getting the software, they would have put it. He probably would have withhold it from uh, from him. So uh, that's the fun thing about software. You can be smart about software and ownership. Yeah, already have Sorry, long answer to a question. We have all the time in the world. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'm already uh, happy that so. Yeah, that there's a lot quite of Quite a group of people that showed up. Yeah, uh, thanks. Do we see people with questions on their face? You perhaps? Ah, uh, yeah. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. I don't have a question actually, but I could um, say something. And it, it was a surprise uh, to me to discover your company works in the Middle East. Yeah. Uh, by my career, I did physics. I once traveled at Lebanon, and I, I w it was in the American University of Beirut. Yeah. But it was today with you, I realized they are the American people, like dreaming people, and the Egyptians, the people with the feet on the, on the earth. On the ground, yeah, yeah. And I see sometimes in my family, we have this kind of thing. Sometimes my father is pushing me some ideas, but when this m family money or something, I say, stop, stop, by. I don't know if it's because as, um, I don't want to risk, <laughs> but somehow it's a kind of thin combination. I, I see your company may work good by having these different backgrounds. And yeah, well, I have no question. Uh, I actually worked at Sanema, so I know Sanema Ventures. Ah. Um, I was wondering... You worked with uh, Mr. Hammond. Yes. 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 Um, and a lot of media and publishing companies have these little startup growth initiatives yeah. um, where they just take in uh, talent, sometimes just students or little companies. Does your company do something similar that you write out a contest and people can just like win a startup fund or other yeah. ways that you help young talent? Yeah, that's 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 the program. The Middle East, the, the, it's a bit of NGO talking now. Sorry for that, but in, in they 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 at Hevels they were able to kind of acquire a program which is funded by SIDA, which is Swedish government development money, uh, to support arts and culture in the region. And uh, they they do trainings with co-working spaces and in co-working spaces with creative entrepreneurs, and. They've been active for now for, for, for two years already while we were struggling to get a fund up uh, in the internal organization. But it kind of gives us a, 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 a paved path in, uh, really into the region. Uh, now we're up there with a, with a fund. Uh, we're definitely not the, uh, not the biggest fund in the, in, in the region. Uh, but what you can see a lot there is uh, very big funds but no idea where to put the money kind of uh, 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 things going on. And we have we're actually right now, I, I can't tell the name, unfortunately, we, with a rather big name in the area in, uh, in, in funding. We're in talks if we could take over the management of their funds as well because they just can't, they just can't get it stable and managed. And on the other hand, they have all the answers with the entrepreneur. They have just have trouble by getting the right team and the right people to kind of manage the investments and actually to, to, do, to, to do the right due diligence. I always have a trouble with the word the due diligence. Um, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's going on. Yeah. Okay, and um, for uh, uh, we love always lists and takeaways. Do you have sort of like the three takeaways or the three main things to think about when you are in a startup and you're at the phase that you need money? 
Okay. Um, one takeaway has to do with the dreamer, right? So if you're still a dreamer, if you're just starting up, please focus on getting your business right. Start trying, start getting, uh, reaching out to customers, to users, whatever your business is where you need in your business, but start, start building the basis first. From this basis, you have actually, you can actually attract some, some, some first achievements. And these achievements are one of the most important thing an investor looks at, like what can this person do? I think even in, s you're from San Francisco, right? Even in Silicon Valley, if investors look at, at, at companies, if you are a, an entrepreneur that has done it before, or tried it before, or comes for the s third time uh, to an investor, uh, one has failed, one has done it kind of, it, it, it helps. So people know you, know what you can do, how you build a team. Th there's a lot of, uh, 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 uh yeah, there's a lot of in that personal achievement uh, uh, part of thing, and the la uh, the last one it's also it's also it's also about you. It's also about you as a person. Who are you? Are you the one that's going to make the difference? Are you the one who's willing to work that extra that extra day or extra night or extra weekend when when it when it when it's needed? It, it would, do you do you do you actually take your uh, responsibility and uh, and, uh, and and make things happen? And maybe that's the last one that makes it four takeaways, which is a bit too much. But, um, but the fourth uh, uh, takeaway uh, as well, if it, certainly when you're a startup, uh, be also honest about your challenges. So I see a lot of elevator pitches, and they, te they tend to be like uh, uh, small commercials. As I got the greatest startup, and I have, <laughs> I have a market of a, a millions, trillions, and I'm going to make it big, and I'm going to get there. It's like also, what, what, what is not going to, what's taking you from getting there? It's and, and that never can be just the money, because we know you want money, because that's why you're pitching to investors. But what is it apart from the money that actually is, is needed in your company and that, that investors or other investors can help out with? Because if it triggers an investor, it's like, okay, I can help you with that, then you're kind of in a conversation. Thank you. I think you were a really good surprise act, uh, Martijn. Okay, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> uh,